Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how we can find the inverse of a quadratic function. Now in my most recent upload on my channel I did a video on how to find the inverse of a linear function. So if you want to check that out before watching this one, you can. But we're basically going to be following the same steps. There are just a couple extra things we need to consider when trying to find the inverse of a quadratic. And that's what we see in these bullet points over here on the right side of our screen. So um, the first one says, notice that the inverse of f of x equals x squared is not a function. So if we look at this graph over here, the red parabola that we've graphed right there, that would be considered our parent function or just f of x equals x squared. Now, when I find the inverse of that, it's gonna look like this, and it's a sideways parabola, which when we draw a vertical line in there to do the vertical line test, we see that it's not a function. So what can we do to actually find the inverse of a quadratic function? Because there has to be a way, right? Well, what we can do is, in white it says when the domain of f of x equals x squared is restricted to only non-negative real numbers, the inverse of f is also a function. So basically what that means is we would be just graphing one side, or the right side in this case, of our parabola so that when we find the inverse, we only include one part of the sideways parabola. So now what we see here, this would be a function, right? And so that's how we can uh, actually find the, the inverse of a quadratic function. We have to restrict the domain. Because if we restrict the domain of the original function, then the range of the new function or the inverse would also have that same restriction, which would allow us to be able to graph the inverse. So how can we figure this out before um, or just when we're looking at the graph? Well, it says you can use the graph of function f to determine whether the inverse of f is a function by applying what we call the horizontal line test. So if I were to look at my original parabola, it's opening up and I draw a horizontal line in there, I see, hey, there's two uh, points on that graph that lie on that horizontal line. So what does that tell me? That tells me that the inverse of this parabola would not be a function because the inverse would not satisfy the vertical line test, right? And so that's how we can use those tests to kind of help us out to see if our original function if the inverse would also be a function or not. All right, so let's look at an example here. It says find the inverse of f of x equals x squared minus two, and we're gonna restrict the domain to being uh, non-negative real numbers, or you know x is greater than or equal to zero. So then we're gonna graph the function and the inverse. So let's start off over here and let's write y equals x squared minus two, and let's switch the roles of x and y. So x equals y squared minus two. Now we wanna undo what's happening to y, same steps we do when we're finding the inverse of a linear function. So let's add two to both sides. So now we have x plus two is equal to y squared. Now I'm just gonna kind of switch these. So x squared equals, or excuse me, y squared equals x plus two. Now we're gonna take the square root of both sides. Okay, now, well anytime we introduce the square root, we have to include positive or negative. So now we would say, okay, positive or negative um, square root of x plus two. But if we think back to our domain restriction, we said we only want positive or non-negative real numbers, right? So in this case, we're gonna say not positive and negative square root of x plus two, we just want positive square root of x plus two. Okay, so that's gonna be our inverse there. All right, so now let's graph um, in, let's say purple, the original function f, right? So x squared minus two. Well, x squared minus two, that means my vertex of my parabola is gonna go down two units to negative two. And now I can build my parabola. There is no stretch or shrink. It's still opening up. There's no reflection. Now, when I build my parabola, I only need to build the right side of the parabola because it says when x is greater than or equal to zero. So I know that I would go like up one and right one from my vertex for my first point. And then when, I, when x would be two, right, I would go up one, two, three, four units when x would be three, I would go up five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So my graph would look like this, okay? So essentially that's just the right side of my parabola, right? So now when I apply the horizontal line test, I know that the inverse should also be a function. Okay, so now let's graph this inverse. Well, now we have a radical function. The square root of x plus two means we're gonna translate left two units. So our starting point of our radical function would be right there. And now we know that if we follow kind of the same pattern, if I were to go right one, we would go up one, but then to go up two, we need to go right four, right? One, two, three, four, and then up two. And then to go up, to go up three, we need to go right nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, and three, okay? So now we would draw our graph here, 
and that's what it would look like. So now if we put in that y equals x line here, which would be our line of reflection, then we should see that we do in fact have a proper inverse here, right? So our graph has been reflected over that line y equals x, so we know the graph looks good, the equation looks good, and that is how we can find the inverse of a quadratic function.